works. Yes, it works very much. Uh, so first of all, I thank, thank you, Daniel, for this. Uh, I think it's uh, too kind. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, this cooperation we started a few years ago in Paris. I was very happy to meet Elizabeth, and thank you for inviting me here. John, Igor, Hope, Nicole, uh, thank you for, um, uh, I'm very happy to be in this school uh, for several reasons, because it's a beautiful school, it's a very dynamic school, all the studios are so, uh, were very, very high level, very interesting, and which is more, uh, being in a, a building designed by Philip Cray, Paul Philip Cray was great because uh, in Philadelphia, he uh, designed several buildings which were even more modern than this one, and it, that's the same preoccupation of details. And the question of detail is very important in architecture. So uh, speaking about housing, uh, uh, I could speak about housing in Paris, but first of all, I think it's very important to speak about housing in general. Uh, in general, because uh, this question of housing was a very important ha uh, question during the, in the last century. In the 50s, 1950s, 1960s, it was probably one of the most important uh, problems that architects had to solve. And so at that time, they invented lots of things. They invented new typologies, new typologies of housing, new typologies of buildings. They tried to invent new ways of building, new ways of being very efficient in building. They worked on the spaces of the house, of the, of the house of the collective housing, because the motivation was multiple. It was political. It was a motivation to give house to everybody just after the reconstruction in Europe, for instance, and very, very interesting examples. Uh, you might know that the Tim Tell, like most, even in the, in, the, uh, in the States, there was a very good, uh, very important uh, uh, preoccupation about housing. So this question of housing is still a very important question, but doesn't interest architects the same way it did before. And uh, though we still have to work a lot on this point and to try and define new ways to work on it. For instance, uh, uh, the idea of living, living in a house, living in an apartment, has evolved very much. Uh, we must think how to answer to all ways of living, because there are numerous ways of living. I mean, the, the traditional family still works, but it's not the only way. So we must find out which kind of housing we must invent. Uh, we must think of the question of mixity, for instance. More and more people work at the same place they live. So this is a... a, a, a uh, and uh, one th uh, another thing is, uh, consider the, the one life, the life of one person. The, in Europe, for instance, people don't move as much as in the States. So we must think of uh, the possible for house for a home for an apartment to evolve. We must think of the way to be flexible. Which answers can we find to, to design houses, to design these spaces, but to answer to some questions which are well defined and some which are completely unknown. So the, the difficulty is to uh, give an answer which is at the same time solid and free, uh, defined and undefined. And it's always kind of this kind of question with, uh, I try to work. Of course, if I think of uh, cities like Paris, where the main problem is density, rarity of land, uh, the answers are not the same. But we try uh, in our research work to find out principles which can be, which can feed uh, normal, usual projects. And sometimes it happens. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But we always try. And for for instance, a few principles on which I try to work. It's the question of flexibility, because when you make, uh, let's speak about affordable housing, for instance, and we can speak also about luxurious apartment, luxurious housing, and it's very interesting to go from one point to another point. And uh, when we think of uh, uh, affordable housing, for instance, it's usually small. How can we make a small, it seems to be big, how can we, Small spaces seem, can, can, seem, can say, seem to be bigger. How, uh, what's the way to make it? And uh, we try this and we'll see. Uh, is flexibility the possibility to answer to this question? The composition of, uh, of, of spaces also is a way to answer to it. So all these questions 
uh, what uh, very important to me as general questions of housing, and they are general in the sense that they are not specified to Paris, to France, or to anywhere. And they, uh, they can concern affordable housing, non-affordable housing, all this stuff. Because uh, we live in a society which moves, which is not uh, homogeneous, uh, neither culturally nor in the way of living of people, and so we must answer to all this, and in a way be very uh, modest, just because uh, uh, there is no definite answer and very close answer. So what's the way? For instance, I, I spoke about flexibility, I spoke about uh, evolutivity of uh, space, and uh, one thing which, which everybody knows, if you want a space to be free, to be free, to be as free as possible, it must have served spaces. So uh, if, you, want, if it's, you have a, a small surface, you have to design very, very well the serving spaces. So, uh, so the, the other space can be free. Because the, uh, when the space is small, what's luxurious is not more space, it's more void. And you can have more void if you have serving spaces. So these kind of questions are the questions which uh, we try uh, I mean, to answer all the time. Uh, the answers sometimes are very difficult. The question can be good, but the answer may be uh, not definite. Uh, uh, other points on which uh, I wanted to base this, this lecture, because I changed all my uh, lecture between 11 and now. I changed everything. I took you, uh, because I just spoke, I said, maybe the exhibition, you know it. So I introduced new things uh, which are not in the exhibition. Uh, and uh, um, three, thing, three points I wanted to develop is the question of economy, uh, the question of the making of spaces, I just we start, I started with this, and the question of materiality. Uh, I don't know if you understand because my English is a bit poor. I don't think I have not spoken English for years, so. <laughs> is it, can you understand? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, so the question of economy is, of course, the control of cost. But it's not only the control of cost, it's the control, the, the uh, economy of means. Um, uh, for instance, when, you design, when we design something, we try uh, to find out what's the, what should be, what can be saved, what shouldn't be saved, etc. For instance, uh, very often when you have a project, uh, if you just to maintain the estimate budget, uh, the uh, client will, uh, na will, will make the facade. The facade uh, let's say if you take noble materials, they will, they will ask for a rendering. You have uh, aluminium or wooden windows, they will ask for plastic windows. But I think it's a really a wrong question, and we experiment all the time. The main point to save uh, money for a building, to control the, 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 the cost, is the, the structure, which is very expensive, and the technical, the mechanical, the technical points. And uh, within this, we can make enormous savings. Uh, for instance, I will sh show you a project. We have an estimated project which has uh, something like $15 million, and uh, we made it with all we wanted for 20% less than what was the estimated budget. We could realize it because nobody, uh, I'll tell you the way we did it. One thing about uh, uh, the materials, Question of materials, uh, it's a very important question because the material, uh, they are the image of the building. Uh, they are the image of the building concerning the facade. Uh, if they are the image of the building for people who live in the building, it's very important to have uh, noble materials. They uh, can last very long. They, are, they, are, uh, they can last very long. Because in, when we build, for instance, in France, a building must last at least 100 years. Yeah. What? Yeah. Perennials. So uh, the question of image, the question of uh, uh, perennial, the question of how people can identify to a building, all this is very, very important, and uh, which is more, to, it's like the skill of a building. So you must uh, uh, do the best. And it's not the part we should uh, save, uh, because uh, as I said before, it's, uh, uh, the question of structure is fundamental. So an architect, and I think the architect is the best person to negotiate the, uh, the economy of the, of the building. The best person, because uh, the more you work, the more, more you work on detail, the more you work on the plan, and uh, you'll define more and more things, so you'll master the whole thing, and you can negotiate with the contractor. And contractors, as far as, as I know, as far as my experience, contractors, if you give them good details, if you, uh, in a way, 
you are the architect who is able to speak with them and just to negotiate, you can have the best thing. I mean, the best thing, the best, uh, 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 the best performance for the same amount of money. Uh, and uh, the question of economy is not only saving money, it's the, the economy of energy. For instance, when you work on a site, it's very important to understand the energies of the site, the orientation, the sun, the wind, which is something very familiar. And so this, uh, uh, the thing which is the more uh, easy for an architect, I don't know what an architect must know, before uh, using uh, technical, uh, mechanical uh, devices. So uh, we try to do this also, etc. Uh, I'll uh, start, and I'll start with uh, two examples which are um, Okay, so uh, this uh, is just to, so to um, illustrate the idea of flexibility. You know it very well, but this it's a, uh, in the building we had to refurbish completely. It was a 1970 building with concrete and had, we destroyed everything because inside because it was uh, really uh, reornamented. It was something terrible and not a nice building. And so uh, we uh, wanted to have the, to have the double orientation it's a building in Paris just by the Invalid. You can see that the, that the view of the Invalid. And uh, it has a double rotation, we wanted to use it. And so we built a smart, uh, something like a smart wall. And this smart wall contains all the sliding, do sliding doors, private doors like this, uh, and uh, storage, uh, desks, etc. And uh, this was to make the whole space free, because this could contain lots of, thi lots of things and the whole space could be free. This, this is concrete, this is structure. Well, we, of course, we kept the structure originally. Uh, so like that, you see part of the doors which close, etc. I do it very fast. So of course, this, this is not a cheap building. <laughs> but uh, I'll show you what, what we can do with this in affordable housing. So etc. I see. And uh, this uh, same idea of flexibility or uh, evolution of the, 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 the house, this is uh, uh, just an apartment within uh, uh, an ensemble of uh, 30 units. And all the, the apartments are designed as a uh, one-story house. Uh, the entrance is through a loggia, which is just like a patio. A patio, or the people call it a patio, it's just like a courtyard. And it opens with the uh, kitchen the living room, and uh, this, all this is the living room, and one way to make the uh, space look uh, uh, much bigger is this kind of things. It's a diagonal, and this was just like a fantasy, because at the, uh, the angle of it is just like in a Cistercian church. It's 18 degrees, just fantasy, because, but it, it helped to design every, all this. Uh, when the door is open, if this door is open, you can see through the window, but it's just, I say, just a game. Uh, the, the only part we could change was this point, because all this is very uh, constrained, you see, we, we can't change all this, this is unique, etc. Just, we have just one, uh, how do you call it, no, for all the mechanicals, just one thing. But this place uh, was the only place, only thing which could move. So we had three proposals for this, either it could be just a storage room, dressing room, etc., or it could be the extension of this room, which becomes a real double room with uh, beds and a part to work, or just like a uh, let's say a living room for the room. It could be uh, connected to the living room and become just like an alcove. And this, and people could choose. For instance, this solution was chosen by uh, Oriental people who uh, liked to have an alcove within the living room, which could be uh, either just a place where to sit and. Uh, but they, think they can eat here also, and uh, if they have uh, guests, guests can stay and sleep. So it's, it's a very uh, usual way for uh, Oriental people from North, from North Africa or from the Middle East. So they like the, this and they use this. The other solution was like that, and it was more Frenchy, let's say, just uh, two beds like this. So it's just like a bedroom within a bedroom. So this is the you can, of li very limited uh, intervention we can have. Uh, this project is about 10, uh, 10 years old. Uh, this is a research. We did this research two years ago. And what's strange uh, is uh, now we're going to apply it 
but not in a new building, in a refurbished hotel particular. Uh, the, the, the question was, uh, how can we make, how can we design uh, apartment or houses which can evolve within itself? So the answer here, we say that uh, if we take a very small surface, let's say just like a, uh, 30, 30, 36 square meters, which is about 400 square feet, but we give height to it, and this was the, the height of it was about uh, um, 15 to 16 feet. So just we take a just a volume like this, a space like this, an opening, and uh, people can do it either when they need it or when they. Uh, they need it to work or they need it because they, the family extends, they can extend it. So, uh, and I told you, we have not built it yet, but for a uh, hotel particular of the 17th century, we are going to use it, use the system, because the, the floors are sometimes uh, 15 feet or more. So what's the principle? Very fast. It's called slices of life. Slices of life because uh, you can't start with this kind of uh, unit, and then, uh, as long as you need it, it can become like this, like that, etc. And it says collective buildings, associates, uh, uh, apartments which can evolve, adapt, uh, widen, depending on the, the, the inhabitants. So uh, very fast. Uh, so this is the, the beginning. So about uh, 400 square feet, about 15 feet, and then. This is the beginning, and then we, we can extend it like this, and then like this, a mezzanine, and then you add a room, etc. And we are doing exactly the same thing, but in an old building. Um, T2 is a one bedroom, T5 is four bedroom. So you start with one, uh, just a very small unit, and then you extend it more and more. So this is the beginning. This uh, is a bigger unit. It's, a, it's the equivalent of a one bedroom, but a very small, I mean, a very common one bedroom. What, uh, common because it has just, uh, uh, for, this is about 500 square feet. One bedroom, as you have the living, the bathroom, living room, etc. So it moves, it changes like this. We'll see it moving. So, and this is all stuffed, and it's all stuffed. It's, uh, all, it's really full. Uh, there is no breathing like this, and it becomes uh, four bedrooms. <coughs> so this is a model. Uh, so this was a model. Uh, uh, different possibilities within this, and uh, the idea was also to leave just one beam to help people to put slabs. Well, so this is a uh, one. Uh, that is a two bedroom. The one bedroom. So in the hotel particular, we are going to do it's exactly the same thing. We are going to just to put one beam to leave the height because the height of the space is either uh, 450 meters, no, 4.15, which means uh, 15 feet. And uh, very often, even if you know Versailles, in Versailles you have very big spaces and then very low spaces. People live in the small spaces and the living is very high. And the idea was to uh, also to design components, very straight components, to make this extension possible. So this is true. And uh, using uh, partly sliding uh, walls, the B. And what we're, what we're doing in uh, this building, uh, the, this uh, hotel particular, uh, the, the space, all this space remain empty, it's a, you know, with this uh, situation. And then the slabs are, don't have the same height. We, sometimes we, for serving spaces, we just, maybe just leave, uh, seven feet, and other spaces, and so it's, the slab is uh, not homogeneous. So uh, we started with theoretical just like that. Uh, one day I, I said to one of the guy, I have nothing to do in the office, just to start and work, work like this. So this, uh, this is two years old, but um, now uh, I'm going to use it. 
and variations in the cross section. Cross section, and this was with just one or uh, well, one orientation uh, apartments, but it could be it's better to be to have two orientations. And that, that's what we are going to, to do. So we have a cross section, which is just like a, a, an idea, and all the components we propose, st stairs, etc. Okay, uh, now if we speak about Paris, I mean, uh, what can we do with all this when we work in a city like Paris? Uh, I'm sorry, the north is here, that's what better to see the whole, uh, uh, the whole, this whole cool area. Was it so, uh, I showed this area because, I showed it because it's the kind of fabric we have in Paris now and in which we work. For instance, uh, close to the railway station, not near the, rail, uh, near the railways, you see, uh, we work on this kind of ground, this kind of sites. Uh, for instance, one project I designed is just in this site. You can see it. Uh, I worked on the other side. But this is Paris, it's a density, and the work uh, we do is just to fill something, to fill empty spaces, to fill in between buildings, etc. So, this kind of density, which is not specific to Paris, the same in New York, the same in Tokyo, the same in most big cities which are which have <coughs> built the city upon the city. Just so uh, we must sometimes it's really acrobatic to work on this kind of project. So uh, the project I am uh, introducing this one you know it was it's exhibited. Uh, one is uh, almost eight years, four years and the last one is two weeks old. Uh, this kind of situation we have so uh, under this street, which is a beautiful street, there is a, uh, an old railway, which is called the Petit Ceinture, the small belt, which was all around Paris. And it was very interesting because it's all horizontal. So the, this belt has always the same height, but Paris is just like that. So it appears, it disappears, and here it's under, uh, uh, underground, and in other parts it's just aerial. Uh, this is a, the kind of land we can find. Uh, this site, has 14 edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And uh, within this, uh, this, uh, this street is 2 meters, or almost 7 feet higher than this one. And so we have to manage with this, uh, which is more, we have blind walls, so we work with all this to, make, to keep open spaces, and which is more, I wanted to have here a very serene course, a courtyard just like this, planted with uh, magnolias. So, magnolias in English? So, uh, planted with magnolias, and uh, it's a very simple shape. That's what I wanted. Beside that, it's a very simple shape, just a, a pure rectangle. And we enter this building through an old trace because this before was a passage. So, uh, we started the passage, the, the shape of the passage, and we enter like this and like that. And uh, we tried to connect perfectly to this, this building and to that building. This building is Haussmannian, which means uh, it's stone and brick, but it's uh, five stories plus a roof. And this one is three story, and this one is one story, etc. So it's the kind of very heterogeneous uh, fabric, the heterogeneous building we have in Paris, all around Paris. So uh, we kept it, and this is what we did. Uh, we start with this building, this, you see just a house, three buildings, and we I connected it perfectly to this one. See, this one, this is a building, and the other is perfectly connected to Rosmanian. And between both, uh, there is a threshold just with the uh, concrete, but concrete which is colored in uh, brown color. And all this building is, uh, let's, we can speak about materials now, all this building is made with uh, uh, polished white concrete, uh, prefabricated in the very big pieces because, if, uh, for instance, this piece is just one. Uh, maybe we should first speak on the building side uh, before the materials. So you see how this one is connected. It turns like this. It, it leaves the passage and the other one connected to the, this one. And you see each window here corresponds to one apartment because we wanted them to be like a, uh, we, we call them a landscape window. So people can, because the window is very deep, the window is very deep, and uh, people can uh, uh, put uh, plants, etc. And all the elements are very thick because 
each element, this one is just like U-shaped, so it was very heavy, and this one is 9 meters long, uh, which means uh, 30 feet. And they were made in Belgium, and every morning they used to come with these uh, pieces to cross all Paris to come and uh, deliver them. And uh, we had, every morning we had to be there because uh, we couldn't afford more than half a centimeter of, uh, uh, how do you say, error, because uh, you see, for these uh, pieces. Now it, it seems to be perfect, but it was not that easy. So all these pieces are very. Uh, this is the other view. Uh, we wanted this. Uh, you see, this building very solid. It's just like a geode, very solid outside, like a rock outside, and inside it's very smooth uh, colors and uh, very uh, no, a very ordinary building inside. Just to be uh, and this. Uh, it seems it's, it still seems to be completely new because of the material. So that's what I explained before. This material, I mean, even if some, someone puts a graffiti on it, uh, it turns out very easily. So it's, it seems completely new. The windows are aluminum, and the whole building is proportional. This was a game also. It's a game, it's an easy game. It was proportioned with golden section, all, all of it. This is square, this, uh, and then within the window you will find all these kind of things. It just, I mean, it's an easy way to find sometimes a way to compose elements like this. This is the facade from, you see, from the other part of the, the boulevard. And so you see, uh, I like it. it's a very serene building, very serene facade. And uh, this repeats, but within it, within it, it's always different. See, the windows are not exactly the same. The sliding panels with uh, aluminum, and uh, the window is 60 centimeters thick outside. Which means it's not a balcony. We didn't have the money to make balconies, so we decided to make this. And inside, it's almost like a loggia, uh, the grid. And here you can see this uh, uh, one part of the court is dark red. Dark red because the same color as this one. See? This one, which is dark red also, but it's. Uh, this one is poly uh, polished concrete, and it, goes, it fits very well the color with the building. So at the same time, it's a new building, but uh, more or less, it's uh, not completely uh, foreign to that buildings. In the night, in the night, uh, it's, it's interesting. <coughs> and we designed a big grid with an artist. Uh, it's just a big frame, and uh, it's very solid. <coughs> and uh, uh, on the ground floor, on the, the, we have uh, duplex houses, so just like town houses. This one is not the uh, second uh, and the third floor. And uh, uh, most uh, apartments have three or four orientations, two or three orientations. An apartment which is just, see, it's just in the trees. Uh, this was just before it was, uh, uh, people uh, lived in it. So here you can see the detail. One element. I mean, we worked. Uh, sometimes we worked on uh, something like this. It can take three months to define just the details with the contractors, uh, because you have. This is just one. Uh, it's uh, just one piece. Uh, you have the uh, for the rain. You have this uh, for the sliding rails. So you have this, etc. So it takes uh, months to make prototypes and uh, etc. And the joint was has had to be. Uh, Two centimeters, which is like maybe two thirds of an inch. Okay. And this is the detail where everything meets uh, concrete, the joints, the joints never cross. And uh, I was told you everything was proportioned with the, the golden uh, section, but it, it's, uh, as I told you, it's, it's an easy game, but very, very easy in a good sense. So uh, this is uh, Impasse du Guet, which they call uh, new. Uh, so this is the land we worked on. As you can see, we have here the railways, which go, uh, they, they go to uh, uh, Scandinavia, to England, everywhere. This is the Gare du Nord. So it goes to, in, to England this way, to Scandinavia this way, etc. So we have this land with a passage. This uh, site with a passage here. Uh, we decided to keep the passage 
and uh, in a way to have two different pieces. It was a very difficult uh, side because uh, the, the, the slope was about two meters high from here this point to this point. So from here to there it was to, uh, a big slope and uh, uh, we have to, everything must be accessible to uh, people, to everybody uh, in France. I, I'm sure it's the same here. So uh, we worked, the, the, the ground worked everything to have not, never more than less than one inch of difference between this point and arriving everywhere. So we have uh, two sides, one, two buildings here and two buildings have there. And the uh, rules, the urban rules are very difficult in Paris and in this area. So, uh, for instance, we decided to have here we could build nine floors, nine stories, six, etc. And we decided to connect to this building, which is a kind of very uh, banal building of the 1970, not very well built. And we decided to be, I mean, to connect to it. Uh, so, not because our land is here, we decided to put this and then. This building you will see it starts with nine and then six stories, so two buildings. And this was uh, one point with this project that the first project in Paris, which was uh, uh, sustainable. And so nobody knew anything about sustainability. So we started it maybe eight years ago. No, nobody knew what uh, what to do. So uh, in this project, the client and us, the client was a, it's a public uh, commission. It's a public commission. Maybe I'll explain you how the commission works in France. It's very interesting. So the uh, client wanted to test everything. So we have exterior insulation, we have solar panels, we have, uh, we, uh, we, um, we uh, do have rain, just to, we, uh, we have big, big tanks just to, to take the rain to, to um, uh, water the gardens, etc. all kinds of things I'll show you. And, uh, so it's, it was an experiment, and we 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 tested so lots of things. Uh, but to me, the question of how, uh, of uh, the house, the house, the, the apartments, this the uh, urban planning of this was more important. So we decided to have this garden. We have a passage here. So this passage uh, not only deserves this uh, the, the buildings, but also uh, all this, the services and we have stores, uh, in the garden, etc. This is a, a section as so, well. Uh, one thing which, which was important to us is to have different answers depending on the orientations. So for instance, south, we have uh, big balconies or loggias which uh, can give sh uh, shadow in the, the summertime. And uh, in the wintertime, as the sun is much lower, it enters the, 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 the space. We have solar panels. We, uh, the, all the rain comes here. We have green roofs, etc. We have a, a garden inside. We have a cross ventilation, natural ventilation. All the, the apartments are double oriented, etc. They wanted to try more, but they didn't have enough money to test uh, other devices. So uh, th this uh, you, this is the first building. It turns around the Rue de la Chapelle, and this is the beginning of the the passage we open. And this is another passage, and so uh, if we talk about the materials, we'll talk about it a little more. But it's a, a very uh, simple facade. It's a north facade, so uh, it's very flat. And uh, here, this reflectors, they are wrong because the contractor was wrong. He was wrong about the angle of this. They should have been more open, but it still works because uh, for the north facade, the inside of it is aluminum and it takes light. and. Inside, the, this corresponds to the kitchen, uh, and oh, you can see here, it's uh, six stories, and this part, which is nine stories, uh, it, it's connected to the neighbors. Now, another idea about materials is that uh, we use very expensive material, expensive, uh, so-called expensive, polished concrete again uh, on the exterior, and inside. Uh, we use various materials just to make several ambiances. You see, and the materials changes always at the edge. It's not uh, so the, not uh, before, as the project before. At the edge, you have concrete here, and then this is fibrous cement, which is a camayo of red, and this is 
also the northern facade, and this roof, which is not a roof, hides the solar panels. And so the passage which is here actually goes through this uh, garden passage. And the And this building is the other one. And here we changed again the, the materials because we wanted that uh, uh, this uh, font, this font, wanted it to be uh, to uh, to change the color, to change the ambience all day long. So this is aluminium. In front of it, it was uh, the, the, this all these uh, tonalities of red. And depending on the sun, uh, it's uh, it becomes gold. It becomes it's silver. Sometimes it seems to be completely red, black, and it, it's a, a very particular aluminum because it's uh, st like stoccato. It's not, it's uh, really like stoccato, it's just satinated aluminum. It's the same one here. It, it changes always the color. the same one also here. What's that more? This is uh, the way we wanted the, the building to be completely flat, and all this is uh, uh, the windows of the staircase. Stair it, it's just the same panel, but it's a, a glass panel, uh, opalescent glass. Uh, so this is, this is uh, from the street. I can tell you this street is very famous. It's a very noisy street in a very popular area. And it's the, one of the oldest streets in Paris because of the Cardo, the Roman Cardo, which was from Notre Dame, so it's so the very center of Paris, to the Basilic of Saint Denis, Saint Denis Basilic. So uh, we were in this building, we saw the passage, and this is the south facade with balconies, and uh, uh, the contractor at the end, he was so happy, he uh, offered trees like this. I don't know what happened with these trees. And as usual in Paris, a uh, neighbor is uh, an old building, but they are not connected. We left uh, a passage between both. So this is from a, uh, the south for that, from a balcony. You see, now you know this, the two buildings. Uh, you see the, and the, you, uh, we see the garden inside, and this uh, now they want to, to make all this become a street. So it will go. Uh, I think we prepared well the the problem because as now it's almost flat, it can be connected to become a street. One passage from above, and uh, uh, this uh, shows all the uh, the two, two buildings, the two the two types of buildings. Okay, so south facade. And uh, uh, for instance, here uh, we worked. It's the same idea as the, in the facade. The elements, this grid, the, this uh, element of grid, is uh, f uh, stopped at the end of this element. This element is just like a, a bath, uh, no, the bath or shower. How to call it? It's prefabricated. It's uh, polished on this part, and uh, under it's not polished. And so uh, it's all designed so rain when it falls. When goes here and then falls and doesn't dirty, and nothing uh, becomes dirty. And the fact that uh, this element is fixed like this, uh, it remains clean all the time. And which is more, I like uh, the materials to change at the edge and not here. This is what we tried here. And every time, this is just the window for uh, one living room. And uh, as before, it, the, the apartments have two or three orientations. This is a, a view from uh, the street. You see them just like it's a rhythm of uh, the balconies. One passage, and uh, in the night it's an interesting project because there is a nice light here, and this is just uh, like being in a uh, uh, precious stone. And I don't know how to say because the light uh, it lightens this and just a game with the of reflection. And this was just before the the sun uh, it was down. And the same, and this is the existing building. It's a blind uh, wall, and this is blind wall. We just cleaned it and we left it as it was because this is the foundation of the building. Because as we took off almost two meters, it's at this is the foundation. I mean, we, sometimes we are very courageous. And some very strange things like this. This is like that because it's the only way to be high here is to give the impression that we connect. So there is a roof here, which has no use, but just because in Paris we must connect, so this 
It's just like the first courtyard and then etc. Uh, you can't see the dots here, but it's uh, just a problem of urban planning. But uh, we wanted to keep all this access because in the, uh, on the ground floor, people can go, uh, can enter the apartments from yeah. One hall. Uh, this is very important to design well. Common. Uh, it's a social housing. I mean, it's uh, affordable, uh, very cheap rent, and uh, uh, it's very important to to design uh, beautiful common, beautiful. No, let's say high common spaces with uh, with material of this aluminium, because when uh, it's high, uh, uh, it's a, this game of color. Every hall has its own color. I don't think I will do this uh, once again. But this facade, which was uh, the beginning of it, was aluminium, and it become this is fiber cement gray, and so uh, and this is fiber cement also, but uh, it's uh, colored. And uh, uh, when it's high, when it seems to be clean, when you put good materials, good tiles, here, here this is pavements like Paris pavement, so people respect it and it remains clean. It's very important not to make cheap designs. And for these uh, uh, apartments, the possibility of changing was very, very narrow, very small. Uh, this is a cross section, a theoretical cross section, it was for the competition. I'll tell you about the competitions in Paris. We explained that we are uh, double oriented, cross ventilation. Uh, this loggia is just uh, in, in case uh, for the winter time, as I told you, the sun can enter. In the summertime, uh, the, the sun is. Pre uh, the sun it's protected by the, the loja here. Uh, and the only things we could change were the kitchen. And the kitchen is a terrible problem in Paris. Because most people want a closed kitchen. We, we think uh, it should be closed and open, or possible to close and possible to open it. So this is, uh, uh, we, uh, we propose this solution. And to defend this solution, we say it could be like this, or it could be like that. So this is impossible in Paris, so they said no. And this is impossible, this is just like a built-in furniture just to put in uh, all the high elements, fridge, etc. And so they said no, so this was possible and they said uh, we are sure that if people want to, to, sh to close it, they can close it here and put a door. As, uh, uh, at the end we put a door here because of the client and this remained open and it works very well. But some people, for instance, uh, People from North Africa will close this. We, they will close this with a curtain or with anything because it's the kingdom of women. And this uh, is the dining room. So it, it works, but the, the possibility to change because of the client was not possible, not as possible as the other project. And I said we might, must make small spaces look big. It's small because an apartment in Paris, a two bedroom apartment, is about 65 square meters to the average, which means about a little more than 700 square feet. So uh, this seems to be much bigger because when we enter here, uh, there's a diagonal and um, the place for uh, dining room is connected to, to, to the living room, etc. So now uh, this a game of connecting spaces, which is like uh, L shape, but at the same time like that, it's the only latitude we have to make things bigger. Because uh, the limit of uh, 65 uh, fixes the rent, and people must afford the rent. Concerning materials, we uh, started with this, so uh, it's easy now you understand everything. So uh, all the solar panels were here and in the other buildings. And this was the idea of the facade. Uh, they told us to make a, a model just in the uh, middle of the conception. We, as we were thinking of the facade and the facade being wrapped, uh, we made a, a model which is just flat. We have to cut everything, all this. This is the roof of the sixth floor part. It's not the exact facade, but it was just in the process of design. So this is the roof. Uh, you cut it and then you, you fold it. And this is the, the upper roof so for the nine stories building. It's like that. You, you fold it and then you make it. And it was much easier than to make a complete uh, Model and we could make, I think, 20 models like this, and every person of the commission had a model. It was very, made things very easier. So, from time to time, I think we should make models. Models are very 
I think probably about one, one make models. We must think, we must, I think maybe three days and work one day instead of the country. Uh, then just wait and see. And uh, there's three man of the model. So this is, uh, if you can see some details. Uh, uh, we do work on the details. Of course, uh, we won't do the same from a project to another project because it always evolves. So uh, to um, solve the problem of insulation, exterior insulation, uh, we had very, very thick frames like this, which is an aluminum frame, which could hide the insulation and the fixing the other uh, frame of the uh, panels, the uh, concrete panels. We can't see the joints, but all these uh, panels. Uh, this is a reflector. It does work, but it should have worked more because it should have been like this. So the, uh, the contractor was wrong with, but he was so good. I mean, the guy who made all the aluminum work was so good that I said, I said okay. He said, ah, do, should I make them? I said, no, okay, no, next time. To put it the, the angle should have been here. But it works a little bit. So we do this one. So this is a model, for instance, uh, of one window. And it's a model, I think it was one for 20. Uh, so it was like that. We wanted the sliding panels to be just like a curtain, an aluminum curtain. curtain. So you have the, the window, the, the window frame, the aluminum frame, uh, the, the windows itself, and these sliding panels, uh, which could hide this one. And so this was the model. And when you, uh, this is the best way to negotiate with a contractor. If you make a model, uh, he will uh, identify to, he will do his best to make it. And the, the contractor uh, uh, designed a special tool to make this, which is not exactly this, it was that. So it just, uh, it's just uh, a sheet of aluminum. I think it's about three millimeters thick, which is a lot. Three millimeters, three millimeters it's, how much is it in inches? Uh, it's one eighth of an inch, one eighth of an inch. It's much easier to work with centimeters, which is. <laughs> so this is a sliding panel, for instance. And so he designed this, and I think he, I think he thought some, uh, he was thinking and reflecting about what, how to design his tool. And at the end, after 10 days, he told me, I, well, I found it. And it's better than what I thought. So uh, the same, everything, when uh, we make the frame, you have the, uh, it's, it's uh, folded just to, uh, uh, to hide the rail, etc. And this is the way the, it arrived. So this was really designed. I mean, uh, we may we design we we draw things, we design them, and then the final design is made by the contractor. And this is the kind of model we do. This was for the grid. So it takes five minutes to make it, and then when you show that to the contractor, he says, "Yes, it's not that difficult." And he could find the so it's that. And uh, the last device I want to show you for rain. Uh, you see, as we have for uh, the balcony, we need uh, two ways of uh, taking off the rain. How to say? About the pipe, the, because in, in case this uh, the rain or come on, the bush, it rocks. If it rocks, <laughs> so uh, it must go from another way, so another place. So we have the pipe, and this pipe, you see, it was not very easy to put all the holes vertical. So they did it with the laser, and there is just one pipe like that. It goes through uh, all these uh, balconies, and uh, goes like that. And at the end, it's just uh, as it was the end of the building, it was on the, the ground floor. We decided to leave it open, and so uh, and have a chain like that. And it's beautiful when it rains because, as in Japanese houses, the rain goes like this, run and falls into a plant box. And this is uh, you can see the detail of this. Uh, uh, balcony, so the, the, the upper part was uh, uh, polished, and the, the, this one is uh, uh, with, uh, it's, it's not so, so large, now I'm losing my way. Okay. So, and it works very well. Because we couldn't hide it, so we decided to uh, make it very, very visible. And here you can see all the detail of this uh, part, uh, the frames, the window frames. The last design, so we saw it, it's, we just finished it a few weeks ago. 
uh, the same bits in Paris. There's the canal. It's a nice place because this canal is becoming a very uh, popular place with uh, cinemas. Uh, we have here uh, this bridge uh, rises just to let uh, the boats go. And we have this, which is very unusual in Paris, uh, all this rock. It's a very thin block. It starts uh, with uh, it's about 50, meters, 50 feet, less than 50 feet, maybe 40, 46 feet wide, and it finishes. It's much bigger. And uh, it's uh, housing for the elderly. And uh, when we worked on this program, we visited several programs, several buildings like this. It was uh, uh, quite interesting because what we saw is uh, doesn't concern architecture, it concerns just life, living, and uh, how uh, old people, uh, it's almost the last, the last place where they will live, uh, spend their time. So they walk a lot, they walk, they ambulate, uh, they look at windows, they want to see what happens in this city. And uh, so we decided to make something like a, a, a fragment of a city, look like a small city, because it's very symbolic, but it helped us to, uh, to define the program. And uh, so we decided to make uh, small blocks, uh, and this, the circulations are just like streets in this, and the, there is no one-way circulation. They, they, can run, they can turn around, and we, all the common spaces open, and uh, through the views, once of the canal, here there is a market, there is a canal and the market here, so uh, a lot of things which happen in the, this place, so we both see everything. Yeah, there is this street, and they can see very, very far in this street because it's almost, uh, you see, just in the axis of the street. Here there is this street with the uh, police station, so it has lots of things happen uh, here also. And here there is a garden, South Garden with a kindergarten, so uh, this uh, uh, it's also animation. And this, this view is the tower, Eiffel Tower, which is very far, but we, we can see the Eiffel Tower here. That's very far. And so, um, see all of these like Belvedere's, uh, and just becoming uh, the play, some small places, places, living rooms, etc. And uh, uh, we worked a lot on this idea, and uh, we worked so much that the, the, the client was sure that we never built. He was sure we had a budget, as I told you before, uh, twelve uh, more than twelve million euros, which means more than fifteen million uh, dollars. And he was sure he couldn't build with this amount of money. And for us, it was like a challenge. And we were very hard to uh, design everything. We made, for every part of the building, we made either industrial, uh, uh, industrial, 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 but industrial, we made uh, all kinds of people who could help us for the facade, for the bathrooms, and to make most, uh, as many things as we could, prefabricated or uh, resembled, uh, coming from, uh, a few things come from Germany, they come from France, uh, from uh, Italy, and just to find out and to do the best thing. And uh, what happened, at the end, uh, we are 25% less, 20-25% less than what, uh, the, what was expected. So, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's the right answer for us, but for the client, he doesn't understand this. He was really uh, a little bit angry because they estimated the building and they were angry when at the end, it, not angry, I mean, we had their feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can see the, see, uh, uh, and all these openings are come uh, na naturally. Uh, one uh, another thing, uh, if you, uh, well, this is just like in a hospital, the temperature is equally warm and humid. So we wanted to have uh, different kinds of temperature. The whole building is heated or cooled normally. But this place, is the, we call it the winter garden because it's north. This one uh, is uh, south, so it's a tropical garden. This, this is just like a greenhouse. It's terribly hot, but it's closed with louvers. So when we open them, uh, it, we have natural ventilations. And this place is for residents for gardening. And this one is just to be cold if they want in winter, or to be cool in the summertime. So uh, uh, all the facades, uh, and as we have several streets, uh, we have different views. 
and different. Uh, it's a very difficult building because it's very compact. And want to, 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 as we said before, just like four buildings, one like this, another one like that, and uh, this was the view to the uh, police station. And at the same time, it's where all the services of the buildings have access, uh, of the winter gardens. And uh, one thing we decided for the materials, I'm speaking about the material because it really belongs to the context. All the buildings which surround the, this building are uh, from the 80s, 70s. This one is, it doesn't seem because uh, it's, color, it's Turkish blue. Uh, the, the one behind is uh, green. Uh, behind it's pink. Uh, this one is green. Uh, this one is brown. And be, 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 uh, uh, behind the other, they are dark gray. So we decided, we tried to find the material which is a bit versatile, which changes. And so we decided to use all aluminum panels, extruded panels here, extruded aluminum here, and the aluminum has a, a very light color, and we talk with called champagne, which is very, very, very light gold. And uh, it changes all the time, the color changes, it changes all the time, um, depending on the, the hour, depending on the, if it rains, if it's uh, sunny, if it's in the morning, in the evening, if, the, uh, if this building is uh, enlightened, this one will, will become blue, etc. It's just a familiar facade, and uh, people around now are very happy with this building because it gives light to the <coughs> area. We have, as you can see, we have narrow streets, and it gives light to the, the whole area. So, for instance, this and that is the same material. So, is this are the winter gardens? Some are double height, and we uh, the client wanted us to be very dense because, uh, as you might know. The land in Paris is very, very expensive. Sometimes the price of the land can be not in this area, but other areas, 10 times the price of construction. So it's very expensive, so it must be very dense. And the maximum height was this. So this is not a roof, it's just the, uh, the terrace after. Uh, and uh, the maximum height was this. And then we have to go for 45, 50 grade just to respect the uh, the, the urban rules. And so this is formed like this, the building falls like this, you have this. Uh. So we go to gardens. And this is, so before the outside, this was the north facade. Now, uh, so this is west, and in the afternoon you see it's gold, it looks like gold, which isn't. Um, aluminum, and this kind of aluminum is very, it's anodized aluminum, it's not painted. It's anodized, and anodized lets uh, the transparency of aluminum. So uh, it's, uh, it remains to be a very natural material, and the, 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 the upper part, the, uh, the, the, the basement, is extruded aluminum, extra because it's much thicker and it's very, very strong. So you can, uh, you, you can do it. You can't, you can't um, shape it. And it's, uh, it's almost kinetic because it's like corrugated sheet. It's extruded. And uh, being extruded is almost uh, uh, 4 millimeters. And you can see the idea of uh, buildings separated with common spaces. So the common spaces during the canal or the uh, another part, of the, etc. And this is the greenhouse. And there is an enormous, uh, huge terrace, panoramic terrace above, with, and the building is just like, a, uh, the same time as like a liner, because usually in this program, uh, we put all the, uh, the elements of the program on the ground floor, and we decided to have here just a uh, living room, animation room, offices, etc. And uh, for instance, on the third floor, we had medical care, on the last floor, we have hairdresser, etc., so people can go uh, all, all uh, in uh, the whole height of the building. This is a south facade, and as you can see now, it's very wide because of the light. One plan. Uh, uh, one thing when I told about the structure, the structure is exactly the same from the top to the ground floor, to the uh, basement. And uh, all the, the space are fluid, so living rooms, uh, animation room, dining room, etc. And, uh, and this is a daycare building uh, for 
uh, the neighbors who want to bring their parents out and was some one, one person to spend the day. The hall, the main hall, the ground floor hall, and uh, always the same preoccupation. All these columns are naturally polished. They are not polished. They are just the, uh, the choice of the how to call the tube to make the you know, art. Uh, it's uh, plastic, and so when uh, when you take it off, uh, it's all brilliant like this. And for instance, uh, when I said the architect is the best person person to negotiate, we negotiated the, the furniture for this with so Artimedi, for instance, and the, uh, the best price better than the contractor. So we could have the contractor to have the best price for all what we ordered. So for instance, this. Well, we had all this material, 50% less than the, the price of the contractor. Maybe there was, I mean, uh, if we are confident we have a uh, uh, good relation with the contractor, it's very easy. And the client was terrible. The client was very incompetent. But it's better to have a... Uh, the client was... Uh, uh, he knows, I think, he was stupid. He was stupid and competent. He, was, uh, he never came. And, uh, but the contractor was perfect. And I told the client, I'm very happy with this because it would be terrible to have a good client with that contractor. <laughs> so this is just uh, in the north part, uh, uh, the, just the, the outdoor space with uh, this uh, uh, seat. Oh, here you can see this material. So uh, it's uh, corrugated, but it's extruded, it's not molded. Uh, one floor is that we took it now, we know everything, so we can walk like this. And sometimes people who are disoriented <laughs> spend, they, they spend hours just to walk. This is a, just a landing. This is a, what we call the tropical uh, greenhouse, because that we have rovers which can uh, ventilate and uh, residents can come here and garden. Uh, so they have shelves just here and they have plants and they can come here and garden. And in the winter time, they, uh, if there is just a little sun, it's a hot place. And in the summertime, we open this and it's very cool. So all this was made with the same amount of money. This is like a penthouse, the top floor with a terrace, and this is just like a, an arts and craft center with a hairdresser, with a sitting room, living room, uh, what we call Snowsland Place, Snowsland Room, which is just like a psychedelic room to uh, stimulate the senses of uh, the people. So the, the liner. And uh, uh, the client was not sure we should. So this was optional because we're sure we couldn't afford to build in uh, furniture. And we wanted it because uh, the rooms are just 20 square meters, which is very small. 20 square meters, uh, it's, uh, what we, it's a, a normal program. And uh, 20 square meters, that means about 250 square feet. Uh, and so it was optional. And uh, we worked so hard on this piece of furniture that we could uh, we, we could uh, uh, make it with uh, the budget of 20% uh, less. So uh, we have uh, just the uh, uh, shelves. This is at the same time the seat, window seat and storage. Window seat because uh, when we visited uh, this kind of programs, very often you don't, visitors don't have where to sit. Uh, you have chairs, but uh, chairs are, it's, a, it's really a mess. And here we can be three. We just did this area with very fat people, they have three. three. We can be three. Like, three no, if it is very big, maybe it would be two. But the weight, it's very solid, and you can't see it, but it's uh, floating, but it's, uh, it's oak. Uh, light comes through here, so it's an indirect light, and when we open this, uh, it, uh, we can uh, see everything. And this was, again, what we bargained with Artemide. And now we have very good relations with Artemide, so we ordered so much. So it's a storage, at the same time. 
But even the, I'm not sure the contractor of this furniture uh, made lots of money. But it was, uh, it was okay because now it has a good reference for him. <laughs> uh, so, for instance, this was our drawing. Uh, it's an uh, initial drawing, the initial detail, for instance. With, uh, so, this, uh, the blinds, uh, they come from uh, uh, Germany because they are the best. And, uh, uh, and uh, they are completely outside, but they are uh, hidden with this. And uh, uh, I think we worked maybe three months to define the prototype with the uh, contractor because in the beginning, we wanted to change everything. He proposed, of course, plastic, was there anything else? No, 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 no. And at the end, it was, uh, uh, it was okay. So this is the same material. And that, here it looks like silver. Here it looks like uh, gold. But we have two kinds of anodization. This one, which is very, very light, and this one, which is uh, just gold, like gold. I don't know why we, we decided to make gold. And this... Uh, and it's a fantastic light. So uh, here you can see, and this, it's a very interesting material because when we walk, it's just like kinetic. And so this, it's floating, this, uh, you can see the, all the details. Of course, one room, uh, uh, one window is for one room. That's it.